Sometimes we want to extract things from cells or combine cells together, but we want to do it without these horrible, horrible formulas. My name is David Benham, and I'm going to show you some tips and tricks so you can use this using AI in Excel. And there's a version on Windows and also a version on the web to do something slightly better. My name is David Benham, and I love talking about the cool new things that people don't know that spreadsheets can do. So let's get started. So let's say I want to extract the given name of this person. I can just write the entry and then I can select the cells. And in the data tab, I can choose this one, flash fill. And look at that, does it in an instant. Now, you can also do it without manually triggering it if you start writing more. As you can see now, it's identifying that these are there and enter will lock that in. But I like being able to manually trigger it because it becomes difficult to use if you don't know that it's always gonna work. Let's look at the family name because this one's a little bit more challenging. So you first give it an example and then you can select it, go to the data tab and choose here flash fill. And now there's a couple of things that are undesirable. So for the first thing, it has kept it in uppercase, which that was how the original data was, but wouldn't it be nice if I could also transform it to capitalizing each word only? The second thing is that it has not taken the two words where I have a double barreled surname. Yes, I am trying to not get sued by these actors. <laughs> so what I can do is I can immediately edit it because when you see this icon, that means the flash fill is live. When you double click it to edit, you'll see this white outline around it, which is indicating to you that you can still edit it and it will try and guess what you're doing. It uses a feature called machine learning, which means that the machine will try and make a guess based on the information you give it. But as you give it more information, it will try and do a more accurate guess. So watch what happens when I press enter to these two. Check that out. In the next one, I can go Dowie Jr., not Downey Jr. <laughs> and then watch what happens to the last two. Check that out. How cool is that? Whilst you see this, that means the flash fill is live. Now, once you do something else, you'll see that go away. So flash fill is not live anymore and now it will not take the next step. Now, flash fill can be used to extract from a cell. It can also be used to change capitalizations, make it uppercase, lowercase, etc. It can also combine from different cells. So for example, here in the description, I can say, Eva buys games for 21K. And what I'm doing is I'm actually going to the given name column. So that's one transformation. Then I'm adding in buys, which is actually a custom word because it's nowhere in my row of data. Then I'm going into games from the product column, but I'm making it lowercase. So that's actually up to four transformations now. Then the word four is a custom word. So that's five. Then I'm going into the quantity column. So that's six. And then I'm only taking the quantity up till the comma but then ninth transformation, I'm adding in K, which is a custom letter. So if you wanted to do this manually, it would lead to a formula that looks like this, which is pretty horrible, because that's nine things you're actually doing to it. Whereas with flash fill, you can give it an example, select your data, and the data tab you have here is flash fill, and check that out. So it's almost done it. What it's done is it's thought that the F comes from this column, and then it's done M for here. However, as we know, flash fill is live. As long as I see this icon, I can immediately edit it so that the M becomes an F and press enter and then it will work. I will note though that flash fill is a text transformation tool and not a numerical transformation tool. You'll notice here it's 16785, which if we were to round it, that would be 17,000. It wouldn't be 16K. So it has just taken the characters that are before the comma and it hasn't tried to notice it's a number and do special things with it. Another practical use that I have for flash fill that I use it for a lot is if you have a lot of data like this, but you want to separate out the text from the numbers, what you can do is just select this and copy it. In the next cell, you can paste and then you can select the column and choose the data tab and flash fill again. Perfect. Or you could do the other way around. You could do one and then here flash fill will take that number. Note that these sometimes will be numbers stored as text. So be wary of that if that is something that happens. But the biggest issue with flash fill is that it 
doesn't create a formula for you. So here, if I was to change this to my name, like and subscribe, <laughs> then it will keep this to be Chris Bevins. Now you can overwrite flash fill by just doing it again, basically. But that can be very tedious and there's nothing that indicates to you now that flash fill isn't working from someone editing the data afterwards. So Microsoft came up with a solution, which is to create formulas based on examples. Now there are a couple of ways that this could work. So firstly, in the data tab, you also have the ability to use Power Query. So from table or range, this will launch the Power Query editor and Power Query is great for lots and lots of reasons. But in this example, I'm going to add a column using column from examples, which is what I'm trying to do. So column from examples here, I can say I just want ever like that and it will do it there. I can double click the column name to rename it. So this is going to be first name. And then I press OK to lock that in. We're going to load that back to our worksheet in a little bit, but let me show you some other things you can do. Now, column for examples could be more than just a text transformation tool. I can go column for examples here, and I can even say from selection if I want to tell it specifically just from that one and tick the other ones as I need them. Personally, I haven't found that to be necessary. Excel will usually figure it out unless you've got a lot of columns with very similar data. So here I'm going to do 21 thousand and then 12,000 and there you go and it's actually done the same thing that I showed you in the other Excel thing so you don't have to understand the formula but you can see that it's taking the text start the first two digits and then adding zero 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 so it's not ideal even though this has the ability to do things that are related to numbers for example one of the things I use it for quite a lot is column for examples and I will say this is going to be 20,000 to 25,000 and then it will actually give me ranges like this which is pretty useful and like before if it doesn't give you the exact thing you can actually give it information and do something more so for example let me do something non column for examples, but I'm going to divide this by a thousand. And then I can actually go to transform and round and just round it to the nearest zero decimal places. And then let's say these are ages and I want to get age bands. So what I can do is in column from examples, I can say these guys are going to be 20 to 29. And then it's doing this, but it's not quite right. I want this to be 10 to 19. So you can actually edit it like we saw before, and it will try and guess based on the information you give it. So it's also a machine learning thing. So I'm going to say range of ages like that. Press OK, lock that in. When you're done with anything Power Query, you can go to the Home tab and Close and Load. will load up your data in a new worksheet, and it is still linked to your data if you manually refresh. So if this becomes 14893, and then over here I can select a bunch of these cells like this, and I can just refresh, and you'll see that these will update. The whole thing updates, but I just wanted to point your attention towards those ones. And then Excel did something else, but it's only in Excel for the web for now. So here I'm in Excel for the web, and I'm going to extract something from this. So I'm going to say this is first name. And here I'm going to say Eva, enter, Chris, enter. And then as I start typing it, it actually does this. So it says fill cells with this formula, and you can even see the formula. So it uses the text before function, which is one of the newer functions in Excel. It says text before that one. It does help if you use these things called tables. I'll show you that in a second as well. So here I can also actually round it. So if I go to rounded, using the table feature it automatically adds another row and all the formatting, etc., etc. So here I can say 
This is going to be 90,000. This is going to be 14,000. This is going to be 41. There we go. Show formula as well. And here you can do extra things with it. Now, the main disadvantage with this is that it doesn't always trigger it. And there's no way to manually trigger it at the time of making this video in Excel for the web for formula by examples, which for me is a major inconvenience personally. I can also say row number. And here I can say one, two, three. There you go. Here's an example of what it supposedly is, should be able to do, but it isn't. Now, if your data is not already a table, then you can select some data and you can go here and format as table. Excel in theory says that you don't need to do this, but I've never been able to work it without it. So here I can say, for example, new. And what I like about tables is that it automatically takes your formatting for you. I could, if I wanted to clear format and then choose a cleaner format. Uh, like this if I want to as well. So here I can say ever buys games, Chris buys clothes, Roberta buys toys. Yep, there you go. It doesn't always manually trigger it as I said before. And now I'm going to insert something and here something that it supposedly can do but let's see if it works is initials. So I'm going to say initials. It doesn't use what I've written in the cell, by the way. I can say here E L C B R. Uh, okay, so it has worked. I might want to use R D J and press apply. Yeah, so it uses kind of a complex formula to get that to work. Notice that when you use tables like that, the formulas refer to the name of the column, slightly different way of constructing a formula. So the other thing that you can do is you can also go to this blog post. I'll put in the, a link in the description below. And here it shows you the kind of things it's supposed to do. But as I showed you before, it doesn't always do them. Initials, first name, last name, middle name. You can remove white spaces. You can do date transformations. This one I very rarely get to work. Uh, sure, you can do these multiplied together for people that don't know how to do a simple multiplication formula. And supposedly it will do that. But yeah. And then rounded dynamically add the rows. This is the one that I tried to do, but it never works. I've never been able to do a, a demo and it just works with all of these things. Yeah, and this is even more advanced filling. So I hope you've enjoyed that. My name is Dave Benham and I have tons of videos on Excel, Google Sheets, PowerPoint, and loads of other tools. Check out my other channels if this is something that you enjoy learning about. Thanks for watching.